Fifth Estate. Sunday on CBC Marketplace. This week, Marketplace looks at the fur market. What is quality and what isn't? What is a bargain and what isn't? Now, what's the difference between these two fur coats? Other than $30,000. Well, this is Russian sable. This is beaver, isn't it, Sid? And you'll find out how to choose a quality fur coat on Marketplace on Sunday night. Join us then. Sunday at 10 on CBC. It seems people will go to any lengths to keep in good physical shape. good. So much for the physical you. But what about the spiritual you? Have you given that any kind of a workout lately? Think about it. Doug Vance, congratulations on an outstanding 22-point performance. A big victory for Waterloo. Yes, it was. Uh, we uh, were 2-1 and one coming into this game, and we... Uh, needed to win this to make a tie for first place. Well, you fellas built up a big lead in the first half, and then you saw Guelph come back and narrow that deficit to four points at halftime. But then again, you pulled away in the second half. We, uh, yeah, we had a lot of turnovers when they put the press on, and it uh, caused us to uh, to let them catch up a bit. And then we got ahead again, and they we turned it over again, and they, they were playing a good, strong press, and it, and it uh, they got back in the game. Doug Vance, congratulations. And now for Ted Reynolds and Jack Donahue. I'm Don Whitman saying goodbye from the University of Waterloo. CBC. That's Bobby's hat. The twins live over there. I know everybody because this is my neighborhood. Now the shepherd's house is just made for you. And it's near a park where you can run. Take a look. Nice big bed for Dad. And each kid can have his own room. I knew you'd like it. Because I'm the neighborhood professional. Century 21. A neighborhood professional can be your best friend. Your new Furniture World hits the front lines with low prices as they enter another operation price war. Look for in-store specials in every department, like in tables. Any of these tables, just $69.99 each. Your choice here for $79.99 each. Here's a great buy at $89.99 each. Check out these at $119.99 each. And these elegant tables at just $149.99 each. If you're really after the best buys in furniture and appliances, this is your sale. Furniture World's price war. From Calgary on Channel 9 Cable 6, this is CBC serving Southern Alberta. From Moncton, New Brunswick. The CBC Curling Classic. In the 
1978 World Curling Championship in Winnipeg, Bobby Nichols lost just two games. One of those losses was inflicted in round-robin play by Canadian champion Ed Lukowicz of Medicine Hat. This afternoon on the CBC Curling Classic, Nichols and Lukowicz meet again. This time, not for a world's title, but for a prize of $6,000. In advancing to the A-side championship in this double knockout event, Nichols scored a first-round victory over defending champion Paul Savage and then beat Briar runner-up Rick Folk of Saskatoon. Lukowicz earned his spot in the A-side final by first defeating 1977 world champion Ragnar Camp of Sweden and then Canadian ladies champion Kathy Pizarco of Winnipeg. So this afternoon, for a prize of $6,000, it's Nichols and Lukowicz. And to describe the action for you, here are Don Chevrier and Don Dugan. Okay, Don, we'll do you a couple of outstanding rinks playing for $6,000, but rinks that differ in terms of style. Well, that's right. Uh, Lukowicz likes to play the takeout game, Don, whereas Bobby Nichols uh, likes to play the short come-around game, the tap-back, the raises, and everything else. So it's going to be a battle of contrasting styles. Okay, uh, Nichols and Bud Somerville, his former skip, can do all sorts of wild things on the ice. Let's see what happens today. The first end, the toss was won by Bobby Nichols. He blanked the end. So here in the second, we have skip rocks being played. Lukowicz is lying two. Well spaced. All that, all that. Lots of room. Whoa. You hear Chernoff Whoa. yelling, lots of room, and he has got lots of room and lots of weight. He doesn't want to go too deep, Don. He just wants to get it by that guard. He's just by, sliding back, a little deep, back on the eighth foot. He's got three well spaced rocks there now. Bobby Nichols in the second end will not gamble and try to follow Lukovic down. He's going to play the safe, conservative shot, and that's the hit on that top one. And he could get a double down and maybe a roll out of it over to the other one on the left-hand side. Hurry, 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 hurry. He's yelling, hurry. He might have turned that in. Now they're starting to move. He's got a good-looking shot. There's the roll in the direction of the other one, but it stays in the open near the center line. Trading takeout shots here in the second end. Here's Fast Eddie from Medicine Hat. Luke Witch would like to hit this one down and roll right onto that center line, straddling the eight foot. He's going to hit that rock on the inside. He may drive it on this one at the back. Look out. Just got a piece of it, but it stays. He's left with two. And Nichols has last rock coming up. There's Tom Locken, the second. On this Bobby Nichols rink, Bill Strum is the third, and Bob Crispin plays lead. And Bobby Nichols is not going to gamble the second end on by trying a draw facing two. He's going to play the, the safe shot, in turn hit. He would like to hang around, but he has to get a piece of it. He doesn't want Lukowicz to steal two here. That is going to roll a bit too far. It costs him one. A steal by Lukowicz on the second end, and that's the way it so often happens as we have a one nothing score for Ed Lukowicz over Bobby Nichols. But when a player or skip blanks a previous end, it often comes back to backfire. Well, that's right. Uh, it's not bad giving up one, but you'd hate to see uh, Lukowicz steal two there. Well, it's early yet. Bobby Nichols by no means in any serious trouble, despite the fact he gave up one point to Lukowicz on that second end. Here's the third end of action now. Again, we have skip rocks remaining. And uh, they're not sure about that one off on the left, whether it's really on the rings or not. It's very close. Lukic is not taking any chances. He's going to take a run at that one. He'd like to hit and roll out with this one. Well, no question now. Where is there? I couldn't tell. <laughs> I was real close to that. Well, I think with this advantage, uh, Grace, why don't they, can't they tell in the, uh... Yeah. Because Bill, Bill thinks it hit the boards first. Can you tell on the cameras, Doug? Can you tell on the cameras at all? They're not sure this rock hit the divider before it met its target. 
Well, it's falling out there, and Johnson's kind of in the way, but it looks to me like it just about hit at the same time. Mm -hmm. No, it's not in the way. What do you mean? What are you talking about? That's the way it appeared, although, as you say, our view was blocked. Well, they are going to take it off. When in doubt, I guess it's out. Well, that's a big shot, because if it was in, uh, Nichols is drawing for two rather than one. He has a lot of weight. He's well by the front guard. He would like to stay in front of that T line. Now he's behind it. Bobby Nichols, line one. He has last rock. Lukowicz about to play his final stone now, and he's with that ice. Going to play it pretty quietly, I would think. Well, Don, he just has to pay back ring weight and just get by that front one if he's going to make contact with that rock. If he overthrows this one, it'll hang straight on him and will not pull at the end. Boy, they're really working on it. They have to get it by the guard. Oh, he's well by. Now it's a matter of picking up the brushes and letting it curl. It's got a long way to come yet. Look at that rock, Don. It's really staying straight just with that extra weight. It's just raw weight. It's amazing how straight it did stay. He is not frozen completely, but pretty well on top of that rock on the angle. You know, if this had been the fifth or seventh, and that rock would have done a lot of curling, but they haven't quite worn the pebble off yet, Don, and that's why the rocks are straight, staying a little bit straighter. Nichols would like to just move it back a little bit, maybe get two, but he wants to be sure of the one. Well, he has to play a pretty fine shot if he's going to get two. He has to hit the rock just on the inside, and boy, he's got a great looking shot if they get it by. He's well by, but does he have the weight enough to move it? Not sure he's got enough steam. Well, there Tremendous hard... line, as you said. Now he'll come up and settle for one. At the top of the four-foot ring. So a key draw makes it 1-1 one, one after three ends. They're playing skip rocks here in the fourth. Last rock is in the possession of Eddie Lukowicz. He is lying shot, partially hidden. Bobby Nichols here is attempting the raise takeout. Remember at the top of the show, Don, we said that Bobby Nichols does not like to throw big weight. Well, this is an indication he's just playing a raise takeout. And he really doesn't have that big a weight, but look at the contact. He's got it. That's the kind of shot you'll see this United States World Championship rink play and often make over and over again. You know, Don, and the reason they play that quiet takeout is they have such great control of it. They can do a lot with it. If you're wide, you don't sweep it, it'll curl. If you're inside, the sweepers hold it straight. They can control that weight. Boy, it looked to me like Ed Lukic turned this one in. Boy, they're really going to have to go. There's a guard they have to be concerned about. He is not by. He's wrecked on it. Bobby Nichols. Fast taking over here in terms of advantage in his fourth end. 1-1 one, one tie. And Nichols here is playing the out turn guard. He would like to get it in tight, maybe just biting the 12 foot and force Lukowicz to draw. He certainly doesn't want to come in too far and set up a possible double. You hear him yelling, let it curl. Sweepers will want to get it on the rings, just a bite. Up in the 12, and it's pretty well hidden. So much so that if they should make a play on the shot rock, it's almost certain he'd roll out, and that double takeout is a risky one. So he's going to draw. This is an interesting call by Lukowicz, Don. You know, he hasn't played too many draws, and now he has to draw full into the 8-foot to score one, whereas if he made a good shot, he could make the double and get out of the end by maybe blanking the end or taking one himself. He's also coming back here with a draw after playing a takeout, his first shot. Well, they're going to have to go on this one, Don. I think he's pulled the string. Despite the fact it's down center, Lukowicz comes up late. Bobby Nichols steals two, takes a 3-1 lead after four ends. And I suppose that factor of the takeout back to the draw was one of the reasons he was late. Well, that's right, Don. It's hard to throw a draw one game at one end and then throw a takeout right after it. Well, Nichols has command right now. We'll be back right after this. Hi. 
Ted Braden has been farming in southeast Saskatchewan for 25 years. He knows how important grain is to Canada. He also knows there's another multi-million dollar industry half a mile beneath his feet, potash. CN knows this too. In fact, CN has invested $250 million in the potash industry since the 60s. You could say it was CN's responsibility. It's also good business. At CN, keeping Canada on the go is a business as well as a responsibility. You want to feel fresh, fresh, fresh. Can't wait to feel fresh, fresh, fresh. So when you're feeling tired and weary, come alive with fresh. Cause new fresh is like a plunge in the ocean. Alive with new deodorant fresh. This is a GM air conditioning programmer. It is the brain which transforms sensor signals to automatically regulate the comfort level in your car. Keeping this and all other parts in top operating condition is a commitment we at Jack Carter Chevrolet Oldsmobile make to our customers. Through the General Motors Select Service System, we guarantee you service satisfaction. And that's the most important part of our business. A total commitment to keep you service satisfied in your Jack Carter Chevrolet or Oldsmobile. And that's a promise. A super surprise this weekend. Let Brownie's Fried Chicken do the cooking. Get a special family pack. Feeds four to five at 865 value. Only $5.99. Save $2.65. This weekend, let Brownie's do the cooking. A super surprise special family pack. Chicken and fixings. 865 value. Only $5.99. Save $2.65 this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Hurry to Brownie's Fried Chicken in your neighborhood. Stop licking The world's largest annual bond spiel got underway on Thursday night. And check these numbers. 728 men's rinks, 64 seniors, 48 veterans, and 85 ladies. Included in there, six teams from Switzerland. Otto Daniele, the 1975 silver broom champion from Zurich, is there. So is Jörg Tanner, the reigning European men's champion. Another one of the 728 is Rod Hunter. Many consider him an outstanding bet for the Manitoba consuls, but so far he hasn't even made it to the consuls. His only hope now is to come out of the bond spiel. Another big name that has fallen by the consuls' wayside is Paul Gausel, the reigning Uniroyal World Junior Champion. He lost out in the Southern Alberta playdowns. Ed Lukowicz, the reigning Briar Champion, was successful on the A side. Wes Amon. A former lead of Lukowicz is also into the Alberta Consuls, as is Roger Hovland of Red Deer. Nobody from Calgary. Bernie Sparks is into the BC Consuls, one of the early choices there. That's update. I'm wondering, knowing how curlers reflect on a certain shot of Lukowicz, which is now he'd hit on the previous end. Well, I would have, you know, Don, because uh, if you make contact with one, you're only going to give up one point. You know, here, if you don't make the draw, you give up two. He did, and he's down by two points at three to one now as we're about to commence play in the fifth end. Leading off, Bob Christman for the Bobby Nichols rink, the reigning world champions from Superior, Wisconsin. I know we have many viewers in the state of Wisconsin and Minnesota who are watching CBC on cable television. We welcome them to our audience today. is a little strong. Crispin is through the house. Well, you know, it's up to uh, Lee to start off the end. He can either change the complexion of the end by either being heavy or light. But when a skip wants it in front and you go through the house, boy, that's a cardinal sin. Ron Schindel is the lead with the Alberta rink, which uses the push brooms, all except for the skip. He throws third rocks. Mike Chernoff, he's got the corn broom in his hand. That's out in front of guard by Schindel. The other members, second Dale Johnson. Chernoff, of course, playing third, and Lukowicz the skip. Brisbane wants to cut back on the weight now. This is an interesting call by Bobby Nichols. He's two up playing the fifth end. There's a corner guard up, which potentially could be a danger to him. And he's drawn to the open side. He's going to completely ignore that corner rock. And it's going to be interesting to see what Ed Lukwich calls now. Well, the book says the man with last rock is supposed to stay in the open side, not the man without it. See, Mike Chernoff is just asking Ronnie Schindler to come down and play a full freeze. 
He makes a good shot here. It's going to be pretty tough Three. for Bobby Nichols to get it out. You say just a cold freeze. Well, anywhere in front, Don, because anywhere in front, they've got to make contact with it. And if they roll them all out, that allows turn off the opportunity to use that corner guard. I thought you were implying that the cold freeze was easy. Attaboy. Well, he's on top of it, not uh, in contact with it. You find a curler or a group of them who can freeze consistently, and uh, they'll give you fits. They'll ruin some great-looking ends. Well, that's right, you can make all your shots and a skipper or a third man come up with a, a perfect freeze and you make a half shot and they're right out of the end. And he's got a corner of it. Out it goes. That was Tom Locken, the second for the American rink. Now Dale Johnson. And I think Mike Chernoff has just widened up the ice just a shade. Because on that first one by Schindel, he pulled it over across the face of it, so he's given Dale Johnson just a little bit more ice. The rock is starting to make a move now. He may be a little bit stronger than Schindel's rock. Come on, tap him back. Come on, come on, right up, come on. You hear Chernoff saying tap him back a bit. That's what he's done. Well, while the Lukowicz team likes to hit in this situation, down 3-1, they are forced to Show a little more gambling tendencies. Well, they want to get their two points back, and the only way they're going to get them back is if they freeze or get the opportunity maybe to use that corner guard. He'll have a roll. And that is going to get him across behind that guard up in front. Not completely behind it. They can still see it with the outturn. Well, when you have last rock on, you want to play on the corner of the sheets, and this is a good opportunity for Chernoff here. If he hits this one and rolls in behind the corner guard, he's got something started. Here's so Johnson again. Right. So this will be a very de delicate yeah, shot. On. Won't throw much weight. Come on. Hoping that the brushes can hold it up and get a little bit of a roll. He's got good line now, starting to move. They may have left it too long, Don. Really cut on it, but his weight is quiet enough. He gets a roll, and... May have gone too far. It's close between those two for shot, but the one on the back appears to be better. This is a difficult shot. You're going way out on a lot of ice, and there's a lot of traffic up and down there with the various team members walking, so the front end have to be alert and sweep it right at the start to make sure that keep it clean. Bill Strong. Oh, he threw that one inside. He's going to be well on that guard. That's a bit more. He may get it the other way. Nope. All right. Just pass it through. Well, now here's a tremendous opportunity for Lukowicz. He has one behind the corner guard. Now if they come up with a perfect freeze on Chernoff's shot here, there's a good chance that they could get three on this end. It's shaping up that way. They don't want to move that back rock. Just freeze right up to it. There's a lot of room. Just depends on his weight. Hangs very straight there. Now it comes. They want to get right up to it. They don't want to leave it in front. A bad looking shot. He's got it up uh, well within a foot. Bobby Nichols has called exactly the same shot, Don. He feels that he cannot get that rock out of there. He may drive it on his own and just leave them a wide open hit for three. So he's asking Bill Strum to freeze up to it. He's playing a dangerous game, though, leaving all these rocks around with Lukowicz having last rock. Let me tell you, this is how four and five enders are started. Drum doesn't get a perfect freeze, boy. They could chip it out of there in lie three. Looks good. Just touch it back onto the other one. And stay there for shot. The way those rocks are set up, Chernoff could hit that one just a little on the outside, Don, on the left-hand side, drive it onto his own and take the two nickels rock out and lie three. He's well out there. Lukowicz is yelling, whoa, whoa, he's got a long way to come. A long way to come. With that weight, it may not. He's going to corner it. Just ease it back. Left his own as shot. It actually worked out very well for him. You can see he didn't have very much weight here, Don. He would 
would have liked to have cut a little more of that rock, but you'll see he just catches a corner of it and just touches his own back onto the yellow one. What if I hit him right, right here and just stay right in front? Well, that draw isn't bad, though, either. That draw is not a bad shot. Same thing. Just try to keep it right on the... Okay. Be nice there. No more than that. Even less, me. No more than that. Bobby Nichols is going to play the draw again, Don. That rock is pretty well frozen to his back one. They have that broom turned upside down, which uh, they had the Nichols rink feels is a better target. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You hear Bill Strum yelling, whoa. whoa. It looks like he has lots of weight to make it to the back, and he's a long way away from those rocks yet. Boy, that rock is taking a long time to come over. He'll just graze it, roll a bit, and you decide which is shot. It looks to me like the red one belonging to Luka, which is still shot. And this shot here, Luka, which would like to hit that yellow one and roll out of that pocket, because if he stays right there, Bobby Nichols will play the freeze and get out of the sand. Well, that rock is cutting. Now he calls them off. And he makes it. They are now lying free. Good shot by Lukowicz here, Don. You'll see he hits about a half of the rock belonging to Bobby Nichols and spins over in front of his own. He has one problem here, though. He kind of staggered them, and there's an opportunity here for Nichols maybe to make a double. He had lined him up perfect in a row. It would have been very difficult for Nichols to make the double. Well, Bobby needs a shot. Jim yelling, whoa, he's well out there. That rock has got a lot of curling to do. He may just get the one. If he does, that is big trouble unless he stays, and he won't. He's going to roll over and out. Bobby Nichols threw that one a little bit wide, Don, and he was very fortunate to uh, get a piece of that rock. If he had gone by that one, he would have hit the back one onto his own, and Luke, which could have been drawing for four. As it is, a free draw for three. See him watching closely. Schindel really bending that brush. Now they lift their heads, take a look at how close they are to the rings, and it looks like he has good weight. Oh, maybe a little bit too strong. Coming back. No, it hangs on in time. That's a very big pickup of three for Eddie Lukowicz. Now goes ahead by a score of 4-3 over Bobby Nichols of Superior, Wisconsin, through five ends of play. Here is Don Whitman. On the previous end, Ed Lukowicz was light with a draw attempt. This end, he hit the rings for three. Dale Johnson, how far do you and Ron Schindel really think you can take a rock? Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. I suppose 10 or 15 feet. Do you, think, do you think the brush is more of an advantage on a draw attempt than a broom? I think it's uh, every bit as good. You know, uh, you can put lots of pressure on there and uh, you can get around guards. You know, if you're playing in through guards and stuff. You can work a lot closer to the rock. Well, I wouldn't say closer to the rock, but, uh, you know, if you're coming around a guard, you, can, you don't have to quit like you do with a corn broom. With the brushes, you can keep on going. We'll return to more action in the Lukowicz Nichols match right after this. Coffee crisp, you are more than a candy bar. You are layers of wafers so crisp, so light, with a chocolatey coating that tastes just right. A center of coffee cream that's so bubbly it's light as a dream. Then layers upon layers are all stacked, and in a chocolatey coating you're wrapped. Coffee crisp, you are more than a candy bar. You are a nice, light snack. That's what you are. Hey, you got a friend that I've told. That friend is me. No matter where you are, 
That friend is me. All across this great big land, friendly people to give you a hand. Yes, you've got a friend at Alco. And that friend is me. You know, folks, when you talk to us about a loan or balancing your budget, you can expect a personal interest in your problem. We put you in the company of friends. Because AFCO is... Anything. You tell me what this is all about or I'll call the band council's lawyer. Johnny, I think you know what it's all about. Sunday night, the final episode of The Albertans. Well, she's going to be just fine. It's a hard she pulled through it well. Thanks. You want me to keep an eye on the Indians around here? Is that it? Don't miss the gripping wind-up in this hard-hitting story of the people who built and are building the West, the Albertans. Tomorrow night at 9, 9.30 in Newfoundland. The meaning of history is man laid bare. These are the words of Will Durant, born of French-Canadian parents, and who, with his wife Ariel, has spent a lifetime writing the story of civilization. Meet this remarkable couple in The Lessons of History, The Canadian Connection, Wednesday at 9.30 on CBC. Air Canada is also participating in the prize fund in the CBC Curling Classic. In addition to the $20,000 available to the winning rink, each member of the winning rink, courtesy of Air Canada, will receive two tickets anywhere in Air Canada's world. Well, the sixth end has been blanked by Bobby Nichols. Now, he did that on the first on, and it backfired on him. Luka, which stole a point. Well, that's right. There used to be a theory about not blanking even ends, but uh, Bobby Nichols is going to take that chance in the seventh end. Okay, Ed Lukowicz with that big three count on the previous end. Now leads by one point. Score is four to three as we play the seventh end. Ron Schindel leads it on. You know, I was interested in Dale Johnson's remarks about the brush dot, and I think one thing that he, he didn't elaborate on is the fact that the brush never leaves the ice. It's always in front of that curling rock, whereas a corn broom, a conventional corn broom, you know, you're sweeping, it momentarily leaves the ice. And I think that's a big plus factor for the brush. You don't feel it's any easier to uh, operate than a corn broom? Well, to be used effectively, you have to put a lot of pressure, a lot of weight on it. So it's as tough on your back and your arm muscles as a corn broom is. Hurry. 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 Uh, takes it out of play and rolls away himself. Getting back to the push broom, I would imagine you'd have fewer blisters, though. Well, that's right, because you're not, uh, your uh, palms are not moving as much. They're stationary on the brush as opposed to the broom where they're always turning. This is Ron Schindel. Trying to drop a guard out in front again. You know, I never used to get blisters. I used to get calluses a lot. Normally when you get blisters, it's because you have either uh, a seam in your glove or the fact that you're gripping the broom handle too tight. That causes blisters. The cause of blisters from Dr. Dugit. Thank you. for acne. <laughs> Bob Crispin, going after this one. And again, he's done what is asked of him. Nothing in play, the leads are all through. And Dale Johnson, the second for the Lukowicz team, is coming up. Really, Bobby Nichols would like uh, Chrisman to maybe hang around on the corners there so we can get something started this end. Just want you to notice how low Lukowicz and uh, Schindel get on that brush on. Look at how far down the handle they are. Come on. Right up. Where should go? Here's Silver Lukowicz. There's so much weight on that handle, uh, I hate to think what would happen if it ever snapped. It turned into a shish kebab. <laughs> Tom Lockin being asked to do what uh, Bob Crispin made a habit of. That's peeling off the front guard. Hurry. 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 This is going to roll over. But he's going to stay in play. Remember the fifth end down there, Don? The corner guard was in exactly the same spot. Lukowicz ended up getting three. It could be meaningful as this end develops. Dale Johnson. Come on. He 
might have taken a lot off this. They're really working on it to get it over the hog line. More importantly, they want it on the center line. The deeper the ticket, the right. more it'll go over. Okay, it's close to the center line. It looks to me, Don, like Bobby Nichols is going to play the out-turn draw around that corner guard. Trying to build an end here now, going on the offensive. He's going to ignore what could be a very important rock near center. Whoa, whoa, it's heavy, 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 heavy. You hear Bobby yelling, it's heavy, 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 and he is heavy. He's well by the guards, but is it going to hang on at the back? Okay, Tom. Nope. Now the advantage switches to Lukowicz because he has a rock out in front on that center line. Now he can draw around it. Take a fair amount of ice, too. Yes, he's got a good uh, four feet of ice there. This is Mike Chernoff. Sweepers jump on it right away. Lukowicz is yelling, come on. Now the rock is starting to make a move. Is he going to get by? Look at that rock cut. He's a little light in any event, but uh, that came a long way. Yes, I think the fact that he pulled back his weight a bit had a lot to do with him wrecking on the guard. If he had just maybe uh, six, seven feet more weight, he probably would have gotten by. Now he's got Bill Strum, I think, playing the intern from the outside in. Boy, they're trying the whole sheet, aren't they? Trying it out, all. Out turns, in turns, wide in turns, hey, hey, wide hey, out hey. turns. <laughs> Billy Strum's got a good-looking shot. Just depends on his weight. They'd love for it to start curling right now. Now that ideal weight is right there at the tee line, just perfect. And he did get in behind. Let me tell you, that is a great shot. Bill Strum going on wide ice and not much of a port there. You know, you have to throw a little bit extra weight. Lukowicz is going to have Chernoff draw with the out turn. He'll add a bit more weight to his previous shot. Oh, right off, right off. You know, Lukowicz yelling, right off, right off. He's got a lot of room. Now it's starting to make the move. They have to get it by that rock on the right. He gets do. by it. Lots of room. Does. Now they're brushing it to get it up. Oh, great shot. He has shot rock. Amazing how much that came in the final few feet. He just barely got by the guard on the right, and then it jerked right over. Now, this is a tough shot for Bill Strum. I don't think, Don, there's enough room between that guard on the left-hand side for Billy Strum to go by and hit the rock on the hey, inside hey. so as to save his own. If you hear them yell right away, he might have turned it in. He did, badly. He's on the inside of the guard. In fact, he'll improve the protection. He's made it worse for the Bobby Nichols rank. Well, there's two schools of thought. It looks like Lukowicz is going to try to draw in here and lie second shot. He doesn't want to fool around over in this area here, fear that he chips that guard. So he's going to the wide out turn and hope to catch a corner of that forefoot to lie to. Here's Ed Lukowicz. They're going to have to go on this one, Donnie, because he's in a little tougher ice, and that rock is starting to cut. Well, I think he threw this one poorly. I don't think he was playing the guard. I thought he was playing the come around draw in the forefoot. Well, it works out to be a guard. Still a very slight opening, though, with the outturn down center. Actually, though, I don't know, Bill. Maybe I can come on that outturn. That through the hole shot isn't bad. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Oh, I don't have a whole lot of room here. I can do the same thing. If I hit that there and just roll behind. Bump it back a little bit. Look at that outturn. Through this hole? A small hole. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Well, yeah. Well, I got a chance at a double. Yeah, right. 
Well, it looked like he was going to try to attempt the outturn draw through that hole. But if he got through it, Don, I don't think he'd get shot of it. So he's resorted to going to the in turn. And trying to play the double takeout on both Lukowicz rocks. The one in the front and the one in the forefoot. Here's his raised takeout attempt. Good line on it. Makes contact and splits it out. Time and time again, Bobby Nichols will make shots such as that one. You know, I'm getting to think that he practices those shots. He's unbelievable at these raised takeouts. Look at here, Donnie. Gets it absolutely perfect. And not only that, he doesn't even disturb his shot rock. Just like his predecessor on this team, Skip, Bud Somerville. He'd pull them off almost every time. But there's a chance now with a little view of the rock from the intern side for Ed Lukowicz. Well, once again, Lukowicz playing the wide intern. It'll run very straight for a while and then curl at the end. Boy, they're going to have to go. Now it's starting to float a bit. Look at that. With the extra weight on, it's starting to fall out. Now it straightens up. He makes contact. Rolls out. So there's nothing on the rings right now, and Bobby Nichols, I would imagine, is thinking in terms of blanking this end. I would think so, Don. He's just going to throw it through in an area that he hasn't thrown a rock so that he can maybe learn something from this rock being thrown through the house. Well, a blank end maintains a 4-3 score after seven now for Ed Lukowicz, and it was rather strange because that end had the potential of representing some points on the board. Well, that's right. When uh, Chernoff throws that one in on the angle, boy, it looked like uh, Lukowicz was going to steal a point. Well, he's ahead by one. He maintains that lead at four to three, and our match will continue from Moncton, New Brunswick, right after this. <laughs> Feel fresh, fresh, fresh. Can't wait to feel fresh, fresh, fresh. So when you're feeling tired and weary, come alive with fresh. Cause new fresh is like a plunge in the ocean. Three fragrances so invigorating. Invigorating. Revitalizing. Revitalizing. Like a plunge in the ocean. Fresh, fresh, fresh. It keeps you fresh. Come alive with new deodorant fresh. Atwood, Ontario, where Shell did a study on home heat. Different types of homes, a variety of heating problems that insulation alone couldn't solve, like improper heat distribution, furnaces that needed servicing, and faulty caulking around windows. The result, the Shell Home Heat Book. It's full of tips on how you can keep your home comfortable and cut down on heating costs. One in a series of helpful books, free from Shell. Shell helps. Now is the time to replace your worn-out furnace with an energy-saving, cost-saving Conservator gas furnace by Lennox of Elblood Arpies Industries in Calgary. The Conservator has no pilot light. Instead, a power-lit electronic ignition is activated only when heat is required. A heat saver flue damper automatically prevents heat escaping up the chimney. See the other incredible features of the Lennox Conservator, an energy-saving gas furnace for the energy age. Available at Arpies Industries, 9202 Horton Road in Calgary. Some keys. I wonder who they are. I don't know, but there sure is a lot of them. Yes, but they'll get them back. They have a war amputee key tag on them. The War Amputations Child Amputee Program, providing children like Norman and Dale with everything from artificial limbs and counseling to college educations, funded by your key tag donations. The score is 4-3 for Ed Lukowicz over Bobby Nichols. And Nichols, you saw a moment ago, blank the seventh end. He went on to blank the eighth end. He's taking this thing right down to the wire. He is. He wants to get two, you know. And what looms really large is that uh, call by Lukowicz in the fourth end where he elected to draw rather than hit. That's right. That could have been a very costly mistake, but he is on top by one. And let's see how play goes here in end number nine. They have four rocks remaining. Nichols has the shot rock covered there at the back by the guard. But there's room for Lukowicz to get down to it, playing the out turn. Well, he's got a good-looking shot if they can keep it straight and get by that guard. Look at Chernoff get excited. Come on, he says. He's got it by. Has he got enough to make contact? Yes, it's gone. Hey, what a super shot by Lukowicz. Turnoff really got excited there. He was afraid that he they weren't going to get by that guard. 
and more importantly, enough weight to take it out. Bobby Nichols now appears to have cut the ice down from what I saw Chernoff give Lukowicz. Well, if he's cut down the ice, that means that he's going to throw just a bit stronger. Yes, he has. They're really sweeping it. Is he going to get by? He's going to get by. Yes, he is. Rolls it over back to the 12 foot. Well, there it shows you two entirely different ways, different weights at least, of getting to the same shot. Nichols played it stronger than Lukowicz, but they both made it. Two fantastic shots, Don. Boy, that's not an easy spot to hit in, especially going around a guard. Now the intern takeout attempt by Lukowicz. Oh. You hear Chernoff yelling right off, right off. Now it's starting to make a move. He wants to hang around here. Yes, he will. He knows that Bobby Nichols will attempt to blank the end and doesn't want to give him the luxury of just being able to throw it through. He wants him to work for it here, and maybe he'll stick and force a tie with the 10th end coming up. First, Bobby Nichols' first responsibility is to make contact with that rock. So many times, you know, trying to hit a half a rock, you end up missing it altogether. want to keep it on the outside they do he's got the roll away and once again the third and in a row Bobby Nichols has blanked it here after nine it's still four three next week the CBC curling classic features Kathy Pizarco of Winnipeg against Rick Folk of Saskatoon Kathy you struck a blow for women's lib last week when you knocked off Bernie Sparks of Vancouver can you do it again? Well, I hope so, Don. But r again, Rick's got a really good team, so I hope we can play well. I know that Rick was sitting in the stands watching that match between Sparks and Pizarco. How do you feel about it, Rick? Well, from what I saw, the girls played really well, and uh, you know, Bernie's team also played quite well. But uh, we're just missing the shots that they needed. So uh, hopefully, we're going to be sharp against the girls. Otherwise, we'll go the same way. Is there any embarrassment attached to it if you lose? Uh, I would imagine there is, yes. Uh, we're just going out to play it for any other game, though. We're playing for money, and just good to be out there, and we'll give them a good run. Does this potentially represent, Kathy, the most money you've ever won in a tournament? Well, yes, um, other than when we played Ed for $3,000, but this certainly is a lot of money. Well, you'll be playing for $2,500 next week in the CBC Curling Classic, Kathy Pizarco against Rick Folk. Well, it may happen so frequently, it may no longer be embarrassing for these men curlers to lose to the women. <laughs> That's right. Maybe they get used to it. <laughs> right now, it's more of a shock than anything else, as Bertie Sparks found out in that recent match against Kathy Pizarco, who beat him. Okay, let's complete this game now. We're going to the 10th and Bobby Nichols has blanked 7, 8, and 9. He's taking it right down to the wire with Last Rock in the 10th end. Well, it's going to be interesting to see whether Bobby Nichols' strategy of blanking these ends is going to pay off because here he is down to his last chance at it. He has to score two here if he expects to win. Ron Schindel playing it through. Nichols, remember, needs two to win, and he's going to play for that throughout this end. He'll start by having Crispin draw the rings. He patted the 12 foot. He's been curling at 84% of this game, Bob Crispin. You know, Don, interestingly enough, uh, Chernoff threw that rock through, and his theory is now that he's, uh, no matter what they do, where they put the rock, he's going to hit them all out and concede one point and try to win in the extra end. If he drops it out in front, he would be trying to steal the end on this 10th end here. Mike Chernoff doesn't want any rocks hanging around. He wants Ronnie Schindel to come down, peel that one off, and roll off himself. Schindel also up in the 80s with 84%. Right. He's going to stay, and that could be the beginning of something for Bobby Nichols. You know, and that's why Bobby Nichols asked for Chrisman to draw one behind the T-line so that if they hit it on the nose, they could freeze to it. Bob Crispin should know the ice and know the weight, but that's where he threw his first one, right down the exact same path. We'll remind you what's at stake in this game. It is a prize of $6,000 to the winner. 
That's to go along on top of the total of 4,000 that each team has won already. Dale Johnson at 85%. All these front ends have played well. He jams two out and his shooter stays. Don, I can't emphasize enough that rock being behind the tee line that offers a little bit of help to the Bobby Nichols team. That rock was in front of the tee line and they froze to it, they wouldn't be shot. But behind the tee line, they'll be shot if they pull a perfect freeze. Here's Tom Lockett at 75%. He kind of slipped coming out of that hack, Don. A little unsteady. Flicked it a bit wide. They're waiting for it. Now they go. He has lots of weight. If they're playing the free shot, it looks like he's got lots of weight. Just a quiet takeout is what it's going to be. If it does get it all the way out, no, it'll tap it back to the 12 foot. Stay for shot. Here's Dale Johnson's second rock. Chernoff would like Johnson here to split them all off and his shooter. He would have to hit that rock a little bit off the center. He's going to get them all. Oh, he picks it out cleanly. The roll, he stays. They lie too. And interestingly enough, Don, uh, although Lukowicz is lying too here, really the advantage lies with Bobby Nichols' team here because they're both behind the T line. And if the Lukowicz team comes up with half a shot against the frozen rock, there's your two points. Here's Tom Lockin, a bit steadier this time on the delivery of his second stone of the end. <laughs> you want this rock to dig in right about here, and it does. It shot. Now the thirds come up. Mike Chernoff. And I tell you, I think Mike would dearly love to get that back one off, boy. If he makes contact with this one, he wants to make sure he spills that back one as well, because that's causing him a lot of problems. Not only in trying to drive rocks by, but... Well, he takes his own back off. This one rolls over, it's shot. There's a break for Bobby Nichols. Now he's lying one. Go back to his draw game. Remember, Nichols has blanked three ends in a row. Bill Strom is down at 56%. That's low for him. Well, he'll gain some points on that draw. They are now lying two. The turnoff can come down here, Don, and if he hits that rock on the outside, he could get a break and drive that rock across there and make the double kill. The thing that he doesn't want to do is hit it on the outside and drive it on his own two at the side there. Mike Chernoff now ready. Throwing good weight at this one, Don. He wants to hit this rock on the inside. Takes it out cleanly. Rolls over. Those are second, third, and fourth shot. Shot still belongs to Bobby Nichols. So in that sense, nothing has changed. Nichols retains the advantage and is working for the two points he needs to win. Bill Strum. Now notice, Don, he's going to the in-turn draw. He wants to kind of corner freeze it on those three rocks belonging to Lukowicz at the side. And things are getting very, very sticky for the Lukowicz rink now. They get right off that. They may have left it a bit too long. The rock is digging in and just barely bites the 12 foot. It is fifth shot. Not much good to them. 
Well, potentially that is not a bad rock. They can still maybe chip and roll that one in. But for Lukowicz, the big thing is to get this rock out of here and roll a shooter out. That is not a bad rock for the Nichols rink up in front there, Don, because they could utilize that one and draw around it and kind of corner freeze it on one of those red ones or chip and roll it. Here's Ed Lukowicz. They're staying right off it. Well, he's throwing a lot of weight, and he's well outside there, Don. He may have missed this one altogether. He has missed everything. That could be a costly mistake. This is going to be an interesting call by Bobby Nichols. If he's playing the intern, he's trying to bury around that corner guard. And if I was him, I would play to the open side. Potentially, he's got the winning rock in his hand here, and he's going to go by behind cover. Bobby is hot, curling at 84%. Boy, they're really working on this one. They're trying to get it by. He rolls in off his own and gets shot that way. Now he's lying too. Probably could control the end a little better, but I'm not too sure where to put the ice for the end. Threw one there and took off. Just have to hit her straight back. Which turn? Okay. Here, Chernoff say you have to hit it straight back, and he has to hit this one straight back, maybe a little bit of an angle, and make the double kill. If he just gets the one done, it's a free draw for Nichols to win the game. And this is where a third man is so important. He can't afford a miss, or it's handshake time. 4-3, Lukowicz leading without last rock in the 10th end. His last rock right here. Chernoff has to watch this one very closely. I think Lukowicz threw that one inside. He may not get the right angle on this takeout. No, nope. back one stays. He rolls for shot and has given Bobby Nichols the opportunity to hit and stick for the win and $6,000 in prize money. Lukowicz really gets a bad break here. It looks like he hits it pretty good. It's a little bit thinner, boy. He's got the perfect double. It's only a matter of inches on those raise takeout attempts. So Lukowicz has done all he can. It's up to Bobby Nichols now. Nichols has blanked three ends to get this very opportunity, the chance to get two in the tenth end and win it. And Don, a big $6,000 rock coming down here. Boy, they're jumping on it. He's well outside that center line. Now they're starting to work on it. Looks like he's got good line. They don't even bother to see how far it'll roll. Lukowicz kicks it off. He concedes two points. Bobby Nichols makes the key final takeout, gets two, and defeats the Briar champions from Madison Hat, skipped by Ed Lukowicz by a score of five to four. And as you said, a big $6,000 victory. Well, that's right. It was a well curl game. Some great shots by uh, Lukowicz and, of course, by Bobby Nichols. Well, uh, Ed Lukowicz lost a tough one. He'll be heard from again. So will Bobby Nichols. And Right now, let's go uh, down to ice level with Don Whitman. But first, we'll pause for just a moment here in 